I'm speaking with Joy Weiss, CEO of Dust Networks. Joy, thank you very much for being with us. Your firm is a leading supplier of wireless sensor networking technology, and you've been in the field for a number of years, really a, a pioneering field, firm within the, within the field. When you started in the business, there was really only visions and PowerPoints, many of them from academics. Uh, now there are a lot of products in the market, and the number of products coming out increases all the time. How do things compare with those early visions? today, the real products versus the visions? What's changed and what's different? Well, I guess for starters, it's a lot easier to produce a PowerPoint than it is to produce a real product. So I guess the cost of manufacturing has gone up. Uh, you know, joke, jokes aside, we, we started the company with a vision, uh, as, as you know, and I think we talked to you many years ago, about really bringing a, a network to bear that was wireless, but had truly no wires, but had the reliability of wires and that was really our challenge was to give our customers the opportunity to replace the wires that they typically use for connecting their sensors to their systems with a really robust wireless system that was so smart that it would basically do the job of networking for them so that the same field force could deploy those wireless networks with the confidence that they would operate as reliably as the wired network and the products that we've produced and the standards that are really based on the technology that was on those PowerPoint charts way back when uh, really do deliver uh, that capability. So we've got many, many, many networks out there right now through our partner customers uh, who in turn deliver the sensors and systems to the end users that are delivering wire-like reliability with the economies of a totally wireless system. No wires for communication and in fact in many cases no wires required for power. You know, at ARC, Joy, we believe that wireless measurement, for especially in the process industries, is eventually going to become the most common form of connecting signals to control systems and monitoring systems. But certainly that's going to take some time, and, and there are going to be some uh, evolutions of, of tools and, and systems over time to do that, and the tools and uh, will have to become more sophisticated and more kind of user-friendly. The tools will have to get smarter f for that to happen. What kind of things are you doing? Uh, what kind of directions do you have now to, to push in that direction to expand the market, if you will? Well, uh, I love that you're so bullish on, on how much wireless will be out there, as well, are didn't, we. Well, you didn't ask me what the term was. In our, <laughs> in our industry, you know, the term, of, the term of adoption is kind of long. We're patient. We're patient. You know, um, I'll give you two different answers, perhaps, to the question. Uh, part of what we see as our challenge is to make the network so smart, in fact, that the level of sophistication of of tools and planning that has to be done is actually quite low. Mm -hmm. um, so as you know, we talk about self-healing, self-configuring networks, self-organizing networks. And indeed, uh, you know, we've had, when we first started making our products, one of the things we did is we called an electrician out of the Yellow Pages who no knew nothing about dust networks and nothing about wireless mesh networks. And we had that person try and install our very first system as the acid test to see, you know, was it smart enough so that with a very simple set of instructions, somebody literally out of the yellow pages could install it, and indeed they could. And I think we've only gotten better at, at putting more intelligence in the system so that the user doesn't have to know about wireless than we have before. That said, um, we try and provide a lot of um, instrumentation, if you will, in, in our networks so that our customers, the OEMs who end up delivering those systems, can provide a graphical user interface and can show if there's an issue in the network and, and can really present interesting and usable information to the end user uh, so that they can manage the network effectively. But overall, I guess, our driving uh, force is to make the network so smart that, in fact, the sophistication of the tools required to deploy it and of the people who do that deployment does not have to be so high. Well, certainly the suppliers are going to want to differentiate themselves as well. And what, what do you see in, in addition to that, to that as the role of an OEM technologies provider like Dust Networks with uh, numerous uh, supplier customers, automation suppliers? How does that, how does that uh, boundary work for you guys? 
Well, we provide, as, as, you, as you know, and, and perhaps as the viewers may know, uh, we provide sort of the wireless subsystem, if you will, that gets integrated with sensors and packaging, uh, which in turn then ends up heading at some point to some system that knows what to do with that data. Our contribution really is the wireless subsystem, and that's where we sort of start and end. And we've seen tremendous innovation by our customers in terms of how they present the information to the user, the uh, kinds of sensors that they've integrated with, uh, clever uses of uh, technology to reduce, further reduce power consumption of the combined device. So there's lots of opportunity for innovation beyond just the wireless bits and pieces of it in terms of having long life, accurate, uh, sensors and actuators in the field, and also having interesting new ways to use the data. I think that one of the most exciting parts of wireless is that end customers are ending up putting sensors in places that they simply didn't put them before because they couldn't because it was impractical. And so in many cases, they're getting new kinds of data and dreaming up applications that previously were not doable. And I think that that puts some interesting challenges to our customers to figure out ways to be able to capture that data and use it effectively. And I think we're seeing lots of very exciting innovation in that space. Yeah, I've certainly seen some things innovative in the, in the measurement world that uh, really are now optimized to try to, uh, the designs are being adjusted really to accommodate the, the new world of, of wireless sensing. That's right. If, I know you serve other industries besides manufacturing and other applications besides manufacturing, which we're really not familiar with, but can you lay out for me what uh, characterizes or differentiates dust networks across all the applications and areas that you serve? What do you, what do you see as your key differentiators? Sure. Well, you know, we are, we are into several different markets, uh, uh, including uh, energy management, um, uh, providing uh, smart city infrastructure. Uh, if you've seen any of the recent IBM ads talking about smart planet, we love that. They talk about trillions of interconnected devices, all of which are going to need smart connections. And our hallmark really has been, as I said, our mantra when we started the company and what showed up in our PowerPoints that now shows up in our products and in the wireless heart standard are that we really believe that if you can combine wire line reliability with totally wireless economics, in other words, really have the ability to put a sensor anywhere, then the applications are really limitless. And when customers come to Dust, it is typically because they are looking for that combination of high reliability and very low cost of deployment combined with the intelligence that we put into the network that allows it to be so easy to deploy. We recently had a customer go head to head against another wireless technology. And while both technologies substantially reduced the cost of installation because they were both wireless, in other words, if you were going to do it wired, it might have taken weeks to deploy, and instead it ostensibly took days, the difference between our wireless approach and the other wireless approach was ours took two hours to deploy, and theirs took two days to deploy. So the good news about wireless is it takes you know, weeks to days, and the good news about Dust's wireless is it takes days to hours. And uh, the customers who really value those attributes of being able to go into a retrofit of an existing building, for example, for energy management, where they really don't want to pull a single cable or conduit through a building, the idea that you can put in a system that you know is going to operate without having to touch any of the building infrastructure is very, very appealing. So those are the kinds of folks that tend to shop at dust. Mm -hmm. One other question, Joy, technology aside, uh, you've been working with large organizations in your career and, sm and small ones, uh, and a venture like Dust. Um, I've always admired you, the way that your organization works and the, the people that you've had, and I just wonder if you have a philosophy of, of leadership that you kind of bring to that organization, if you would. Do you have such a philosophy, and, and if so, what is it? Well, well, thanks, Harry. That's a very nice, nice compliment. But apparently, you haven't been talking to my staff. <laughs> you know, I, I do think that it's. Uh, I don't have a, a single guiding philosophy, but I do think that there are some principles worth following. I think that that uh, we've been fortunate at, at Dust to have a very uh, easy to understand mission and purpose. There's no ambiguity there. That sometimes in a larger organization might get lost. It's been very clear what we've been trying to achieve. It's been very easy to communicate that, and if you bring good people around you and have a very, very clear mission, uh, uh, it's 
surprisingly uh, easy to get people to move in the right direction, despite the fact that we've had quite daunting challenges over the years in terms of delivering on the promise of this technology and, and working through the standards process that we went through and, and, and working into an industry that's very well established as a newcomer. All of those things presented challenges, but I think that having a, a well understood, commonly held mission and, uh, and making sure you have good companionable people around you are, are certainly part of the ticket uh, to, to being successful. Well, thanks very much, Joy. Again, I've been speaking with Joy Weiss of Dust Networks. Thank you very much for watching.